Welcome back, this is Danberg SC. This is something that I've not done before. It is currently 6.15 a.m. on November 20th. And if you've been following, you know that today is my day of my tournament. This is the first tournament I've done that is outside of my school. It doesn't have, it's not my teacher's run tournament or anything like that. This is the first actual just, uh, tournament that I'm going to. I have no idea who I'm going to be playing. I don't know the time rules yet. Um, I don't know a lot of things, but I wanted to kind of take you through a day of this with me. So we're going to do this together. I just woke up in my pajamas. I'm making tea for myself and coffee for my wife. Uh, there we go. But I wanted to bring you along today for this activity so I will keep you updated and I'm going to start my day by drinking a bunch of water drinking some tea to get some caffeine in my system so I can wake up and then I'm going to leave my house right now it is 6 15 I'm going to leave at 7 30 ish so I will get back to you when I'm on my way out so hope you guys enjoy this, this is a little bit different than something I've done before uh, but, yeah, I'm gonna try it out. It's probably gonna be bad, but here we go. All right. So I was planning on recording this while I was driving with, um, I was gonna put it on a little stand and record this, but the stand kept falling and it was like a huge road hazard. So I, <laughs> I drove all the way here and now I'm gonna talk about this. It is currently, um, 8.40 a.m. Uh, I am 20 minutes early for check-in so check-ins at nine and then the actual tournament starts at 9 30 so i've got 20 minutes to kind of uh get here um i want to talk about uh four things on my way here this morning so i'm just going to use my time now in the parking lot i am stopped so don't i'm not driving or anything at the moment but um i want to talk about the preparation i did how i feel uh, my goals for today and the strategy i'm going in with today so first off talk about prep um Aside from all the, the puzzles and stuff and all the training I've been doing recently with my teacher, uh, last night um, went to bed at like 10 o'clock. It was in bed at by, by 10, um, <clears throat> probably closer to 9.30, and then tried to close my eyes at uh, 10 o'clock to be able to sleep and not be tired for the tournament. I woke up this morning at 5.45 and um, out of bed by 6, and then I... The, the breakfast on all the tea and stuff like that um had a nice breakfast this morning didn't overeat but didn't under eat tried to stay um try to have some calories and then uh for actual shogi prep um coming in today knowing that i'm going to play uh static rook or ibisha uh, regardless of what my opponent does um I'm confident with the, the strategy and the attack that I've been working on, regardless of what they're doing. I have two major attacks that I'm going to try out today. Well, two major ideas to start with if they're going to play Static Rook or um, Ranging Rook or Ibisha Furibisha. If they play, um, if they move their Rook across to play against me, I'm going to play a strategy called Henna Choko Kyusen. So it's a quick attack. If they play... Uh, Ibisha versus me or Static Rook, I'm going to play uh, Hayakurigin are the two attacks that I've uh, prepped. I also have a lot of um, edge attacks, Hashiseme, uh, that I've been working on uh, to get in. So my attack wise, I've got a couple of strategies that I'm going to use depending on what the early game looks like and what the mid game looks like. Um, for defense wise, depending on what they do, I'm going to, if they're playing Ibisha against me, I'm going to try to play Yagura against them. Uh, that's the one I feel most confident with. Um, that's what I'm going to try to do. If they play Furibisha against me, I'm going to try the Funegakui, which is the boat castle. Um, and if they do the bishop exchange, then I've got some castles and, and some ideas for that as well. Um, if they do kind of bishop exchange into Furibisha, I'm going to try to just play the standard um, Yagura after that. I talked to my teacher, and if they do the rook exchange or the, the bishop exchange into uh, Ranging Rook, then Yagura, he said, just try it for now. Just learn Yagura for now, that part. So I've got all the ideas of what 
I think I should be doing. There are a couple openers and a couple lines that I have no idea how to deal with yet, but um, that's my uh, that's for my that's my prep. I've got I've just been working my ass off. I'm gonna try this out. So how am I feeling today? Uh, on the way in here, I was feeling um, like uh, just another day at the board. Like okay, I'm just gonna get in there and we're gonna play another game and it's gonna be fine. But as I got farther away from places I knew, I'm in a place I've never been to this um, center before. Um, as I got closer to the center. I've not been on these roads and that's when I was like, I actually don't know where I'm going. Uh, obviously I have navigation, it's gonna be fine, but it's just not a road that I've been down a hundred times, um, literally and figuratively uh, for this tournament. So I started getting a little bit anxious and a little bit nervous about that. But when I arrived here also, this is a sports center is where the tournament is held today. And it's it's huge, it's a massive facility. I'm not gonna show it because I, I um, don't know if they want this to be filmed and I don't wanna kind of, give away too much about where I am, but, um, it's a massive center. So I was also a little bit nervous about like, Oh my God, what is this? But it's a sports center. So I'm, I'm sure it's large because there's like a basketball arena or something like that in here. So that's why, that's why it's so big. Um, so, um, there are some things I'm just not ready for. Um, I'm kind of just kind of, I'm kind of just kind of, I'm a little bit nervous if you can't tell That's how I'm feeling right now. Uh, let's talk about goals. Uh, goals for today are a range of things. I don't know. Well, well, let me back up. So this tournament is the second tournament I've ever actually played in. I've played in a lot of tournaments at my school and a lot of tournaments in like uh, my neighborhood and things like that. But this is the second ever um, event that I've attended with the name tournament in the title and anyone can join. So until now, the tournaments that I've been going to are just specific for the students at my school or the people in my neighborhood or something like that. This is the first open tournament I'm going to where anyone can register, anyone can come uh, from in-state, out-of-state, whatever they want, they can be here for this tournament. And this is the second one of those I have uh, done. This is the first one that I have not been that my school ran. So my school ran the tournament that was open for public um, a couple months ago. I came in fourth in that uh, in my class. Uh, this time I have no idea who I'm going to be playing against, what the levels are, what the time things are. So I'm going to, uh, kind of, uh, prepare. So what am I, what do I expect before I go into goals? I'm going to add a fifth point is what do I expect? So I expect, um, this to be a, uh, tournament. I think it might be just you go in and you're matched with someone. I don't think they're going to say, what's your rank? I don't think they're going to ask me my rank at my school and align me based on that rank because what's to say I'm lying, right? What, what, why would I say right now at my school, I am in uh, eighth class. If I go in and I say I'm in eighth class at my school, what's stopping me from lying to say I'm actually lower than I am and get just crush the lower bracket, right? So I don't think they're going to ask me what my rank is. I think they're just going to put my name on a piece of paper and throw me into the fray with everyone else, which means I could be playing someone that is just as bad as I am, or I guess just as good as I am, depending on how optimistic I feel, or someone that's way out of my league, uh, way above me. So I don't know. I But I don't think that this is going to be a tiered set where there's going to be different groups or classes. I would be surprised if they ask me what my, ra my rank is. If they do ask my rank, I'm going to say eighth class because that's what it is in my school. Um, for time-wise, I don't think there's going to be um, uh, Byoyomi, which is like you have a set amount of time and then after that amount of time, you have to make a move within this amount of time, but that time resets every time. It's called Byoyomi. Um, I don't think that's going to be here. I think this is just going to be you get a specific amount of time and then it is uh, when that time runs out, you are done. You don't have bonus time. Tip, I've played the last tournament I went to with my school. We did 20 minute games where I had 20 minutes. They had 20 minutes at the end of 20 minutes. It was done. I'm expecting something similar to that, maybe 30, but I'm expecting not much less than 20. If it's less than 20, I'll be surprised. But regardless of what it is, I'll play my best. Um, I'm expecting there to be a lot of kids, I think, just from my experience. I don't think a lot of adults or a lot of really, really high level players are going to be at this kind of tournament. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm hoping that there are more kids around that I can play people my my ra my rank. But um, that's what I'm expecting. I'll let you know what the actual situation is during or after my way home. So my goals. So the goals I have are if I'm playing someone that is equal rank than I am up to about fifth class, I want to win. I want to play to win. 
Um, if I'm playing someone above fifth class, my goals are a little bit different. Um, but basically, the if I don't know my opponent, if I don't know what my opponent is and they're not going to tell me and it's just a, a mystery, my goal is first off to go into the mid game without any blunders in the early game. So just basically going into the mid game on an even playing field. I don't want them to get any advantage against me in the early game and then we have to play from behind through the middle game into the end game. Um, so whoever I'm playing, I want to get into the mid game even is my first goal. Uh, that's very difficult to do. Uh, I feel confident that I can at least play the first 15 moves without screwing up anything too massive. But yeah, that's my that's my goal. Get through the opener, basically. In the mid game, I'm just going to play my best uh, against whoever there is, whoever what's going on. I'm just going to try to play my best in the mid game and 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 get as many advantages as I can, piece advantages or position advantages or whatever I can. But I think my goal is to try to get into the end game as soon as I can. Um, the end game is what I've been really focusing on and really practicing. And even if I go into the end game at a little bit of a loss or a little bit of a disadvantage, either by position or by uh, piece uh, value, I think I can still have a chance to win if I'm focused on it. So that's my that's my strategy for uh, what my goals are. Uh, no, sorry, that's my that's my goal. So get through the opener, regardless if I'm playing without any massive blunders. Get basically be able to hit mid game on an even footing, play as best as I can in the mid game, but get to end game as fast as I can. So if there's a line where I can draw out the mid game for 15 more moves or go straight into end game, I'm probably going to lean towards go straight to end game, uh, which is going to be beneficial to my strategy. So let's go into strategy. First, I want to talk about time. So. Uh, Time-wise, if there are, if it's a 20-minute game, I don't want to end the game with 18 minutes left on the clock and be like, I was just throwing out moves. I, I wasn't thinking. I was just playing as fast as I can. I also don't want to lose because I have 30 seconds left in an end game and I can't read it. So I have to balance my time, but I have to be calm about it. So the way I'm thinking about this is, let's say I have a 20-minute game. 20 minutes my time, 20 minutes their time. So 20 minutes my time means that's 1,200 seconds. If each of my turns takes 10 seconds, that's 120 turns from me. If my opponent plays the same, if so if I play 120 turns, that means my opponent also has the ability to play 120 turns. It's a 420, uh, 240 move game. I've never played a game that long. Long games for me are about 170 moves. Those are long games for me. So with that in mind, 170 divided by two, it's, it's about 60, 70 moves per person. I have more than 10 seconds per turn. Um, so I'm gonna try to keep that in mind where even if I feel like I wanna play quickly, at least wait 10 seconds, at least wait 10 seconds or think about it, take a breath and then play. So I'm not gonna burn my clock down uh, to nothing, but I'm not gonna burn it out. I'm not gonna just not use it and then play as fast as I can, regardless of what my opponent's doing. That's my strategy for time. Strategy for uh, game, again, as I said, I'm gonna try to get to the end game as soon as I can and, and play a good end game. So that's it. I've got 10 minutes before check-in starts. Um, it is uh, gonna be interesting. I'll let you guys, I'll keep uh, you posted on what's happening and I will talk to you again soon. Okay, so I just got here, um, checked in, I'm back in the car. Uh, I ran back, I got a tea from them uh, when I checked in, but, uh, so already it's looking pretty good. I got in there and immediately they were kind of like, are you here for Shogi? Because I'm not from here. I'm a foreigner. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm here for Shogi. And they were all like, oh wow, this is really like strange. We don't really have many foreigners come for Shogi. So they were really excited to, uh, see me here. And they're like, well, where, you know, what, what are you? And I was like, I'm from, and I said my school, and my school is notorious for being like really strong and my school wins a lot of these tournaments. So when I said my school, they're like, oh, you're, you're from that school. Okay. Your teacher went to the, you know, the actual Shodekai like in Tokyo, the training with professionals and stuff like that is, is my teacher. He's a really strong shogi player is my teacher. So when they heard my school, they were like, oh, okay, uh, which class are you? So it's divided into four classes. I was wrong. They're not just going to bundle you together. It's an honor system that, I mean, I'm representing my school now since I said it, so I can't lie about it. So it's an honor system that you come in and represent your, your dojo, your school. So there's four classes. There's B, there's 
A, there's S, and there's SS. I'm just going to say the ranks as they are in Japanese. I screwed up uh, screw up the English too much. So uh, B, cl B class where I'm in is from Nikyu and below. So right now I'm Hachikyu, which is eight, and this is second. So Nikyu and below. Then there's A class, which is Ikyu and Shodan. So the Dan is the ranking classes, the actual big boys. So uh, A class is from Ikyu to Shodan, that level there. S class is uh, basically Nidan to Sandan, so the second rank to third rank, and then SS is Yondan Ijo. So basically, amateur professional players is SS. So I'm playing in the lowest class, and uh, now my strategy is changing a little bit because I know everyone's being is in Nikyu or below, and I've heard that my school's classes are relatively rated higher. So I'm in eighth class here, but it means we're probably shooting for fifth class. Or I'm fifth or sixth class in other schools. So Nikyu, I'm going to try my damnedest to to beat these people, the people in my class. Uh, I'm going to try to beat this. There's probably going to be a lot of kids in my class, which I'm fine with. I'm going to, as same strategy I played with before, try to get to the end game and play. But now I know I'm playing with people that are Nikyu and under, and I'm not going to be playing with like any like super pros. I have a lot more confidence in this. So one of those strategies I did today was I dressed a little bit nice because I wanted to elude an air of confidence, not arrogance, but confidence when I'm playing. So I walked in and I'm dressed the way I am and they were like, oh, you must be really strong. And I was like, no, 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 I'm, you know, I'm a very low class in my school. But I said my school and they're like, I, well, it's still, I, I know people from that school that say that they're this league and they are that league of that school, but it's different when you play with against other schools. So I'm going to come in and I want to kind of psych out my opponent by looking looking nicer than they do that's part of my strategy is if they're nervous to play against me maybe they'll, maybe they'll play a bad hand and they'll screw up so that's part of my strategy i'm going to try to play today I, I picked it in my wardrobe i didn't say it before but that's part of uh, the strategy of why i dressed the way i did today so i'm going to get ready uh my game's start in 20 minutes i'm going to use the bathroom once so i'm going to drink a whole bunch of water and i'm going to uh drink this tea slowly throughout my competition and i will let you know between games how i did if i can uh, if not i'm going to write down how i did and i'll talk about it after but all right wish me luck here i go it is now five till three I've been playing Shogi since 9.30 this morning. Uh, result of the day, I won three of my games, lost two of them, and I came home with a prize of some canned tuna. Hell yeah, look at this. Gave him 15 bucks, walked out with three, four cans of tuna, baby. <laughs> I don't know if I got my money back or not, but I'm sure proud of myself for winning three of my, four, my five games today. Um, I'm gonna drive home now. I'm going to collect my thoughts I'm going to talk about it over a beer tonight. And uh, yeah, I did well, way better than I thought I was going to do. So I'm very proud of myself. But uh, yeah, this is my first by myself moment since I won. So this is pretty cool. So um, I'll talk to you guys when I get home. You can tell from the background is different. I just got home. I was planning on going in and having a beer and talking about the tournament. I've been thinking and I've... Um, Got some thoughts organized, but my wife called me. I told her about the results, which I already told you guys. Uh, she was really happy, so she wants to go out to eat tonight. So I, uh, she's already down in the city. I'm going to take a quick 10-minute train ride down to the city, and then we are going to have uh, dinner with a friend tonight down there just to celebrate, small little celebration, nothing nothing big. But uh, yeah, this is my first real like away from my school tournament, and I... I placed kind of, I, I, I came home with a prize that not everyone got a prize today. This says, you know, I, because I won, you know, that's what this is. So, you know, it's just some tuna, but she was like, this week we're going to have tuna sandwiches all week, uh, to, to celebrate. <laughs> so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing or not, but we're going to have tuna sandwiches all week, but yeah, I'm going to head down to the city. I'm going to have a uh, dinner. I'll come back. I might put some pictures of that celebration this evening. And then I'll talk about um, all the stuff that I want to talk about as I get home over a beer with you guys. But I hope you're enjoying this kind of day in the life of a tournament day. Uh, not documentary, but kind of, a, a, yeah, I guess sort of pseudo documentary style that I'm doing. Um, on the train, um, I have to study some more uh, hishi puzzles, some checkmate puzzles. Not, uh, I have to do 20 hishi puzzles, so 
uh, force checkmate puzzles and I have to do 50 checkmate puzzles before I go to sleep tonight. It's a lot. But uh, we will, oh, I have something in my nose. That's nice. Wonderful. Oh, it's just a light. Um, but we will uh, work on that on the train. So I will head out now. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. All right. I'm back from this evening with my wife. We went out. I'm having my last beer at home. Cheers. Ugh. So we won some tuna is the result of the day today. We, we won some tuna. Let's talk about um, what happened. So I took some notes during the tournament and I'm going to read some of my notes now. So uh, after I got into the actual uh, tournament, um, I went into the room and there were 12 tables set up. So long tables, like um, you could sit four to a table, two on one side, two on the other, long table, pretty narrow, but long. There are 12 of those tables set up and there are two boards per table. So there were two seats across from each other. There was a board there, two seats across from each other, board there. And um, they had these clocks that I had never seen before, these, these timer clocks. So usually the clocks that I'm used to are like digital clock where it has uh, the time as, you know, one minute, 15 seconds, something like that. You click it and it's done. This one you could set um, as it was like a spinning clock, like an old alarm clock kind of a thing. And as the time went up, there was a red like lever uh, the last five minutes. So if this is time. As the, as the hand swung forward, there was a lever that would click and it would lift that arm up. And after it passed a certain part, the arm would drop down. And if the arm dropped, you were out of time. So it was this interesting clock that I'd never seen before. I'll try to get a picture of it, but it's, uh, it was interesting. It's made for if you want to do more than one hour on a clock. So you could set it like a standard clock. It was like a standard clock. It would go around. So if you wanted to do a 10 hour tournament, you'd set it at 12 and then every hour, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And then if at 10, if it clicked over, then you were out of time. So we, we did those games. It was a clock I'd never seen before. It was, it was very cool. And then while I was waiting for people to come in, while everything was getting ready, there were a couple people from my school that showed up. So when my other school members kind of came, it wasn't a lot. It was like maybe, uh, there were probably a total of, so 12 tables times two, 24 boards. And there were, every board was full. So there's about 50 people there, right? So about 50 people there all together. Three people were from my school and everyone placed. That was from my school, by the way. But um, yeah, so when I saw people I knew, I was kind of calmed uh, down, and then I asked kind of, okay, so what's the what's the schedule like today? What is what is the the what are the games going to look like? And they said that you're going to have basically three games this morning, then we're going to have lunch, and uh, then it's two games the afternoon. So the lunch was kind of provided; it was just like a lunch box, uh, nothing special. But I'll get to that when it came. But that was that was the kind of st style. So it's thirty minute games, and. Um, if you ran out of time, you were out. So there wasn't bonus time or anything like that. You had 30 minutes, your opponent had 30 minutes. So you had an hour to play a game, fight on the 80, 81 squares. So I got into my first game and um, it was a older gentleman who was about 60 years old. And he said that this was the first time ever he has played a foreigner. So he's 60 some year old dude been playing shogi since you know forever basically just for fun it's like i've never played a foreigner before we did a game where it was um a um static rook versus static rook so ibisha my standard style he played very very similar to how i play he did an interesting opener i'd not seen before but i kind of kept my uh my my tactics tight and I was just looking to as I said in the beginning my whole goal was to get through the early game without any damage done so to be able to get into the mid game clean at least on equal footing this game I came into the uh mid game uh actually a little bit ahead I didn't have any pieces or anything like that but we both had our castles set we both had our castles set and he was jiving around with the the bishop of the cockapiece. He was driving that around for a little bit. And 
it came to the point where he used, he moved that piece like six times and I kept doing a move that would promote my attack, but also kind of defend what he was doing. And I did that like three or four times. So by the end of the time he had his pieces down, he had his castle, I had my castle, he had no attack really set up and I had an attack set up. So there was an advantage in the early game on that. So I was like, okay, I wanted to go in with just equal footing until the mid game. And I was actually coming in with a slight advantage into the mid game. So I felt really good. And uh, we played a game. It was a little bit stressful. It was a little bit tight, but I was just trying to stay calm, trying to use my time on the clock and not rush anything. And I won. So my first game I played against this guy. who's like, I've never played a foreigner before. And I beat him. So that was his kind of introduction to playing with people of other than other than the Japanese people on the board. It's like, okay, instead of just playing, I'm going to defend the, the whole game. The object of Shogi is to checkmate your opponent, not defend your own king. Uh, you need to defend your own king, king in terms to checkmate your opponent, but that's not the, the goal of the game is to checkmate your opponent. So I was like, let's go to war. So I was um, very aggressive back, and it got to the point where I... I I put him into a position where any move that he could have made was poor for him. And he spent 15 minutes of 30, 15 minutes staring at the board going, I don't know what to do. And he was just like, oh, and he just kept looking at the board. And then he, so during this time, I'm realizing that no matter what he does, no matter what he does, I have a good attack set up regardless of what's happening. There was one line where I kind of gave him an advantage, but I'd take the advantage directly back. So he would take one of the Kyosha in the corner for me. I would immediately take one of his Kyosha back and then we would fight. But I already had another promoted piece up in that corner. So he was, it was like, I was better. I, I gave him a small advantage. I took that advantage back. So I didn't even give him an advantage. We had the same advantage, but I had a better position. So I had a better attack. Like I was, I was in the advantage. That was the best move. So I, because of this position, regardless of what he did, I already had my next three or four moves like ready because I'd prepared these lines before. I kind of knew what I wanted to do. I've only played this line uh, once and I played it against um, my buddy. Um, I don't know if he wants me to use his name, so I won't use his name, but you know who you are. You played center rook really hard against me. He, was probably, he might be watching this. Um, Albino. I'll say that much. Albino uh, is one of his screen names. So... I uh, I played him in this and I prepared a whole line against what he did. So I had all these moves lined up. So he spent 15 minutes and he was like, okay, I got to make a move. Played a move and I like immediately slammed out my next move because I didn't need to think about it. I was like, I know from studying that this move is the best move in this position. I know it. And I didn't need to think about it. And I only needed to think. So I knew basically the line until checkmate until... He could have made the best possible move in a bunch of positions. And if he made the best possible move in those positions, I knew the counter to each one of those best moves until I got a checkmate. This is how the game was like kind of a cheese where he was like just blitzed into me and I was like, all right, let's fight. And I went back. So I kind of only had to wait until he made a move that wasn't the best move on the board. But then I have the, com I have the, the comfort of knowing that's not the best move on the board. He cheesed into me and I knew how to defend it, which means I can win the game is kind of the the overall idea you have to you can't just blitz into someone if they know how to defend it then you basically lose in shogi so he blitzed into me hoping that i would blunder something and i knew all the lines and it felt great so every time he would make a move i would like immediately be like boom there we go back just hit the clock and then he would spend another like three or four minutes looking big move boom back huh. and it came to the point where i had 20 i had nah i had about 18 minutes left on the clock he had four, four minutes left on the clock on his. So he was like, I have to start moving. So then he would be time crunched and he would, and I realized I was like, okay, I have 18 minutes left. He has four minutes. If I can make the board difficult to read again, because he, he started playing moves that were outside of the, the best moves. But the issue is I'm not perfect at Shogi. So even though he's not making the best moves, I sometimes don't know the best response for the not the best move. So this is the best move. If he does the best move, I do this and I should win. But he does this move. And there's other moves that work really well against that. But if I don't know how it is, my, my counter to that move could be a worse move. 
and then I give him an advantage and then he can play back like that. So I'm sure I did that a couple times. I don't remember exactly how the game went, but there was a position where he didn't play one of the, the moves that I had prepared. So I had to think for a couple minutes. Uh, I, I think I spent like four minutes on that move and then I, I dropped the piece and I was like, okay, that doesn't look terrible. But it came to the point where both of us were kind of like fighting. I had a better position. He had, I had a pile of pieces on my hand and he had none, but my king was basically naked. He was just slamming into my king trying to checkmate me because he realized like, I have the whole board in my hands. If if I if he doesn't give me like one turn, if he gives me like one turn, I definitely can find a checkmate. I have 18 minutes left on the clock. I'll find a checkmate in 18 minutes. So like I just had to just play. I just I just had to play. So every time we played a move, I would try to blitz out and move quickly because I wanted to beat him on time. That was my strategy on this. So instead of me attacking him, I didn't attack him at all. I just played super defensively, just super defensive. I actually never, I won that game, but I never made an aggressive move against his king, ever. I just, for the last like two minutes, he would drop a piece down and I would go, how do I defend that? Uh, there, and click the clock. And then I wasn't even really looking at my own king. So it was the complete opposite of game one where I was like, focused on on his king like i need to i need to win this game i need to to to, to fight his king and, and to checkmate that's the point of the game and uh it came down to this game where i i won based on just defending my own king so i beat him on time and there was one point in the game um where oh, so, so i beat him on time that was that was the end of my second game so i would just look at the the last i have in my last line here is um i would look at the board and I would, uh, I would look at the board and I would say, does he have a mate? Does he have a checkmate? If he didn't have a checkmate, I was going to play an offensive move. But every time I looked, I was like, I don't think he has a checkmate. But I don't think, and I, I know, are different. So I was like, I'm not going to take the chance with this much of an advantage on time and this much of an advantage in my hand. I'm not going to take the chance. I'm just going to play defensively and I won that game. I want to step back to game one really quick. There was one point in the game one where I could have done this very aggressive move to go immediately into the end game from uh, like the 20th move. So his early game wasn't super great. So there were positions where I was like, I could just blitz in, throw away the Kaku and take the Kyosha and the Kema from him, which is a good trade for me, promote my Hisha and go right into end game. But I was like, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong about this and I throw that piece away and he has some move to, to, to defend it, I've screwed myself like on move 20 of this first game. So I was like, my whole strategy was get to the, get to the mid game or get to the end game as fast as possible. But I didn't want to completely jump the mid game and play like a, a strange game. So I decided to play more like standard against him and it, it paid off. So that was one other point I forgot about game number one. Then it came lunch. And we had these uh, bentos. So they said I was gonna. I was supposed to play three games before lunch and then two games after. I played uh, two games before lunch and three games after. So my, I was super stressed uh, after those first two games. I won my first two games. Um, I if he if my opponent had more time, I still would have won that game. It was not a. It was not an idea. It wasn't a problem of time management. That was the reason I lost. I won because of time management, but I also won. I would have won if we had another 30 minutes on the clock. I really feel that way. So I felt good about that one too. So lunch, we had just a bento. Um, and at lunch, I was like, holy shit. I, I came into this hoping that I could only have, like, again, my goal was don't mess up in the early game go into equal footing in the mid game, get to the end game as fast as I can, use my skills to try to play the best. Winning was not part of my goals. Winning was not part of my goals unless they were similar to me. I said I wanted to win, I wanted to win, but it wasn't what I was gonna set the, my standard on. And I had already won my first two games consecutively. And I was like, I feel great already even if i lose every other game today i'll still feel like i came in and i i was able to win and my my rule was i wrote i'll be happy as long as i lose well that was what i wrote here as long as i lose well 
and then my game three and four happened. So uh, I wrote this before my game, before game three started, I had a thought and I wrote, <laughs> Uh, so much for my strategy to look confident. It's hard to look confident when your hand is shaking like a wet chihuahua. Because my hand was just really shaking. So I tried to elude the sense of confidence when I would approach the table. But then I was just shaking like crazy when, uh, when I was trying to get on the table. So that was a, a thought I had. So let's get into game three. Um, game three... So in the game, you get this piece of paper. And you write... You get a number. And you're like, okay, you're number three, you're number eight. And then he'll say, okay, number three, fight number eight. You fight, whoever wins, the winner brings the papers up to the top, you say I won. They write circle on the one that wins, X on the one that loses. You switch papers with someone else, you go back and you fight. So you can tell how good your opponent's doing when you look at their, um, when you look at their uh, paper, because it'll be circles and Xs. So I had two circles on mine. My opponent had two circles on his. So this was a win or lose, uh, this was going to break one of our streaks, this game. Older gentleman. And before I sat down, everyone was like, this guy's very strong. But everyone said to me, they were like, you have to be careful. Dan is like, Dan's better than he says he is, <laughs> basically. So I, I felt good too. So we went into it. We sat down, we started playing. And I had a super, super, super good early game. I played really well and he was even like oh my god like in the early game there was a position where i put down a piece and he was like oh that sucks like it was really bad we did a, a bishop chain we did a bishop exchange on that game and i had a bishop in my hand and he was fighting me and i dropped a piece pulled a piece out of position dropped a piece pulled a piece out of position and then i dropped my bishop and i was able to fork his hisha his strongest piece and a kyosha for free uh, and it was either you lose the Hisha and we trade or I take the Kyosha for free. And he kind of realized, he was like, oh my God, I'm going to get one of these pieces is going to be a big issue. And then he pushed a different pawn. He tried to make me like take something up and I was realizing like, no, 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 no. You're not going to psych me out. I could take that pawn and this problem doesn't go away. This Hisha problem doesn't go away. So I just took the pawn and he was just like, oh my God. Like he was just looking, he's like, uh, I'm just throwing away my pawns now. So he was a little bit tilted. And he made a move and I thought at this part for maybe six minutes of my 30. A long time I thought on this move. And I was like, if I take the Hisha, he could take back with the gold. And then his attack is basically done, but I do give him uh, a second bishop that he has in his hand. He can start dropping stuff on my side and maybe he's going to take my my bishop from me or my rook from me i didn't like it so i said instead of trading a piece instead of trading a piece i'm going to take a piece for free and promote and then in turn be able to potentially fight my way up and promote my hisha and i did that so he was like realized he was like okay well that sucks like i think he was planning on me taking his hisha taking the gold and then looking for places to drop uh, the kaku, the, the, the bishop that he was going to take from me. But I just took his kyosha for free. And then he was like, now I don't have anything to drop. My attack is gone. So I felt really good about that decision I made. And I was playing and playing and playing. And we got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm ready to start going into checkmate mode. Like we're in the end game. I'm ready to go. And I was like, I think I can find some checkmates. I think I can find this. I think I've got this. And then he pushed a piece towards my castle. And I looked at it. And I have, I have about 15 minutes left on my clock. So I still have half of my time, basically. Uh, a little less than, I had about 10 minutes left. He's about 20 minutes in the early and mid game. I had 20, 10 minutes left on the clock, which is still, there's plenty of time for end game for me. As long as I can find a checkmate. So I'm tired from first two games. I've had lunch. I'm relaxed and I'm like, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I've already done better than I, I, I should have been. I've already done better than I thought I was going to do. Let's just relax and sit. So he pushes this piece against my castle and I go, I don't think it's checkmate. I don't think it's checkmate. Let me make an aggressive move. So I put an aggressive move back. And then he pushed in. And took, because I thought my attack was more dangerous than his. 
and I was wrong. He pushed into my castle and kind of ignored my attack because he realized his attack is faster. And as soon as he did that, I was like, yeah, I didn't read this right. I just completely didn't read this right. I had 10 minutes left on the clock. If I had just read to absorb the attack that he was trying to do, there wasn't a checkmate. He didn't have a checkmate on me. I had three or four different ways to checkmate him. And it wouldn't have been, it wasn't an immediate checkmate. I would have needed to fight down this aisle. If he, if he defended like this, then I have this checkmate. Or fight down this aisle, if he defends like this, I have this checkmate. So I saw different ways to try to get him into a checkmate corner, uh, to, to corner him out and to choke him into a checkmate. It wasn't going to be simple. I was going to need more hands, more turns in order to do it. But I made this mistake of not treating his attack on my castle seriously. And he got me. And I was like, shit. I felt really bad about that loss because I was like, this was avoidable. This was avoidable. I had time on the clock. I just didn't read it because I was tired. That doesn't make sense. I'm able to read this. This is something I can read. It wasn't a high level like end game or anything like that. It was something that I, I should have been able to see relatively easy. But I, I was just, I guess, tired or something. And I went, I don't think. If I have 30 seconds on the clock, it's okay to say, I don't think. Now with 10 minutes left. Now with 10 minutes left. So I lost that game and I was like. <sighs> and then people were finally like, oh, you should have done this. You should have done this. And I was like, I was actually thinking about this. And they were like. Yeah, that's a better move. Like, so I was, I, I had, I had the ideas of what I should have done. I just didn't do it. I just didn't do it. Lost the game, and then I sat there. I was like, "Damn it!" Like I said, I wanted to lose well, and I played really well in the early game. In the mid game, it was probably one of the best games I've ever played in the early game and mid game. Like seriously, one of the best games I played. And maybe that get me overconfident of like, oh, I'll just fucking, I'll just continue on to the mid game or to the end game. And I didn't, I stopped treating my opponent seriously for a second and that's all it took and I was able to lose. And it's never too late to, to allow counterplay. It's never too late to blunder and lose the game. So I learned from that and I was like, I was a little bit tilted. But I had a little bit of a break and we went into game number four. Game number four, I really felt like I was getting tired. I really felt like I was getting tired. And, uh... I was like, okay, let's get into this. And my opponent played into the Yagura, is what I play. So I play the Yagura, that's what I want to play every game. If my opponent allows me to play the Yagura, I will play the Yagura. My opponent also played the Yagura. We both did the Yagura. And I was like, this is like, this is what I do with my teacher all the time. Me and my dad play this all the time, even. Like, I have a lot of experience with this. From, from my level, I have a lot of experience from my level with this strategy. And I was like, I felt so confident. I was like, this is great. I'm able to beat, I'm able to at least play very well against a, a, a basically a professional player in this style strategy. This guy's not a professional player. He's in B class with me. I think I'm going to stomp the shit out of this guy. So I'm not looking at the clock. I'm not looking at the clock. I'm just hammering pieces out, hammering pieces out, hammering pieces out, hammering pieces out, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, geez, slid down. And we get to the end game. And I realize, I was like, he's going to drop a piece right here. He's going to drop a piece right here to attack me. I know he is. I know he is. So, and I was like, I have no clean way to do I had an attack setup that was ready to go in for checkmate on him. I was like, I am ready to go and attack him for checkmate. I'm going to win this. And... He looked at me, basically, and went, okay. But it, it, was, it, was an intense, it was an intense end of the game because I knew exactly what he was going to do because I know that that's how you destroy my castle. I know it's how you destroy the castle. I know that's what he was trying to do. But I had this position where my rook needed to stay in, in this line. It needed to stay down the line that it was in. I couldn't move it from that line. Or my checkmate idea, the whole concept of my idea was done. And I knew he was going to drop a piece that was going to move my Hisha out of the way and in turn also attack my castle at the same time. So I was like, I have to attack first. I have to attack first. My castle's not in danger yet because he hasn't 
fought me yet. Like he hasn't done that drop yet. I have one turn first. And if I drop my piece first, if I drop my piece first, he has to absorb mine. He can't just drop, I can't drop a piece, then he drops a piece, then I start the attack. And then he starts the attack. I'm just a move ahead the entire time, which is why I was like, okay, I need to do this now. I don't want to do it now. I want to wait one more turn. I want to drop one piece here to pull this over and then drop this piece. And then it will be a killing blow. But I was like, no, we got to do it right now. We got to go right now. So I dropped the piece in the best position I could find. And he was even like, Ugh. and then he just dropped his piece. Like I thought I was like, I thought he couldn't do this because I had my, my idea. If I drop the piece, you drop the piece. I attack, you attack, I attack, you attack, checkmate. You don't have time, right? Like that was my thought. And I realized as soon as he dropped that piece, I started doing, I started calculating again. I was like, I think I'm right though. I think I'm right. I really think I'm right. I don't, I don't see how, I don't see how he can get me. I don't see how he can get me first. So I just take my move. I was like, take my Hisha. You don't have time. I was like, you don't have time to take my Hisha. I'm going to move in and, and, and attack you. And he just took my Hisha. And I was like, did I calculate this wrong? Did I calculate this wrong? And I looked and I was like, I don't have a checkmate. I don't have a checkmate on him and I lost my Hisha. I was like, God damn it. I could have, I could have dropped that piece where I wanted to drop. When he dropped his piece, just move my piece away. Just move my piece away and his attack is basically stopped. And then after I move his piece away, he has to do something to take a piece, but then I'll be able to actually do my attack. So it's the same problem I had with the, the game number three, where I was like, I'm okay, I have time. And I didn't have time. And I was like, son of a bitch, I lost that game too. It was so close. It was so close. I, I, I had him down to, I need one more move. I need you to give me one turn and I have a checkmate. You can't get out of it. I had a hishi, like the, the forced mate on him where... Even if he tries to absorb it, he can't absorb it. I have a checkmate no matter what he does. But he was able to play aggressive on me and he ended up finding the checkmate before me and I lost game four. And I was like, son of a bitch. But I felt better about that loss because I really thought that my idea was gonna work. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was a miscalculation rather than a non-calculation. In game number three, I just didn't calculate. I was like, I think that's right. And it I, I, it wasn't right. I thought it was right, but I didn't have any evidence behind it. Game number four was, I really thought my calculation was correct. Even after two turns, I was like, no, my calculations are, he can't just let me take that piece. And I realized it's dangerous. It's really dangerous. And it's actually a really gross position. It feels really bad to be in that spot with my stuff being that close, but it wasn't a checkmate. So it was like, it's not a checkmate. It's fine. And I lost that game. So that was that was a big, big bummer. So uh, on to the last game. It's getting long, 30 minutes, I apologize. Five minutes a game and then five minutes before. So game number five. I get into it. I take a long breath. Every time... I, before I take my first move, I'm usually, regardless of what I do, if I'm first player, if I'm second player, I I do this before, this is my, before the game, I go. Make my move, hit the clock. Regardless, so even if it's, even if I'm the second player, that might be 10 seconds or 15 seconds that I give my opponent for me to get into the game. And that's just for me to show myself, it's okay to let the clock run. Calm down, take a breath, think this is the beginning of the game, take everything else out of your brain and just focus on these 81 squares. That's all you need to do, focus on the 81 squares. So I took my long breath and we go in, he's playing center rook again. And I was like, yes. So game number two, if you remember, was center rook guy. And I did really well. He wanted to play aggressive against me. And I was like, let's fucking dance. And I beat him and it felt good. This guy's also playing center rook and I was like, Oh, I feel so confident again. And we're going through it. Same thing. 
He's going through all of my prep. Every line I prepared, he's walking into it. And I was like, I know what to do. I know what to do. I know the best move. And actually, I found a move in that game that me and my teacher found. I had a lesson. I had a private lesson with my teacher that we talked about center rook on Thursday this week. Today is Saturday. So literally two days ago. Saturday, Friday, Thursday. So two days ago, we talked about this position and that position, that line came up today in game number five. And I knew the best to move on the board from my lesson on Thursday. And I was like, there it is. And he did exactly what I thought he was going to do. He was going to, he removed his, his uh, bishop from a line. I opened up my bishop's line and then I took his corner. So taking the corner is when you get their Kyosha and potentially Kema for free is what happens when you take their corner. And I got to take this guy's corner. My prep worked super well. And I was just on top of my game on this last one. And I was like, I'm going to win this. And even he was just like, as soon as I got in the corner, I saw him. He was like, oh my God. And he was like, I just, he was like, yeah, I couldn't have done anything about that. And it was like, yeah, dude, I prepared this. Like you wanted to play that line. That's not a good line. Like it looks like it's a good line, but from the style that I play, my attack, when they do center rook, I do a very quick attack. I do a very light castle and I do a very quick attack because standard lines go, a lot of times the players will just play the standard attack if they don't know how to deal with what I'm doing. It's like, well, I don't know what he's doing, so I'll just do this attack. I'm prepared if they know what I'm doing, it comes into an even middle game. So both of us will have an even middle mid game. We'll start the mid game on even footing, and then it's who knows the most tactics, who has the most creativity in the mid game to get to the end game, and that's that's a fun game. If they don't know how to deal with my attack, they blunder, and I'll take the corner, or I'll take a piece, or I'll open up something where I can promote my my rook or something like that. There's a lot of like advantages I have in this line that he played, and he just played. He was trying to play standard against me, and I wasn't letting him play standard in this position, and I I won from this quick attack. And it it felt really good. So during the game, he's playing with me, and I was like, I I feel really confident. I, I was like almost calm. It was almost like a moment of zen on the board, where first I took his Kyosha, then I actually took his Hisha for free. I just snapped his Hisha. So he was like, like he was just like he was falling apart he was falling apart on the board my my early game was too good i got too much of an advantage and i ended up taking his hisha for, his kyosha for free and i traded his hisha for uh i think a silver or something like that i was super super up on points like massively ahead so at this i have this massive pressure now in the end game because he was like okay I have nothing left. I'm going to ham everything I have into you. And basically his king was pretty well defended after like he realized I was destroying his back row. He was like, I need to defend my king. So he defended his king. I had an attack set up and I was ready to start. I was like, I need three more hands. If I can get three moves, then I have a checkmate on him. I need three, but three moves in order to be able to begin the checkmate process. I had to set up a checkmate in three moves, but that's three moves that he doesn't necessarily need to react to. So he has three open hands. So I played the first move. He does what I want. I was like, okay, great. That's exactly what I want. Okay, next, second move. He does an attack that forces on my king. And this is when I sat there and I was like, okay, I want to make this last aggressive move. If I can make that move and I can live through this attack, then I win the game. I win the game. Is this starting to sound familiar? This is the same problem I had with game number three. This is the same problem I had with game number four. Now we're in game number five. And I was like, this is it. I looked at the clock. He has about 15 minutes left. I have about 10 minutes left. I'm a little bit down on time on this one. I was really thinking about how to end this game quickly and not screw around with this. So I'm looking at this and I was like, okay, I know how my attack, I know what I want to do with my attack. I need basically two more turns. I need to do a turn. He needs to react to it. And then I start. Uh, he, I need to do a turn. He really can't do anything about that. The best thing for him to do is just disregard it and try to attack me. And then I go into my checkmate phase. So I looked at the board. And I was like, basically, I need to give him two more open hands. And I was like, 
if I give him two hands to do whatever he wants, does he have a checkmate? Does he have a checkmate? And I was looking and looking and looking and looking. And I was like, I don't think he does, but he might. He might have one here in this spot. There was a spot. I was like, he might have a checkmate down here. So I looked at my hand and I was like, what pieces do I need to actually do the checkmate I want? I was like, I need that gold and I need that silver. I have a Kama. I have a Kama I'm not using, basically. If I want to do the attack and I can do the attack that I want to do, I don't need this Kama. That's me taking a piece, so I'll have to give him one of my... I'll have to basically throw away my both of my Hishas. I have to throw away both of my Hishas to do my, my checkmate. So I was like, the checkmate better damn well be a checkmate, or I'm just going to give him two, both of the strongest pieces. I had both of them on my side too, but I was I was like 99% sure. I was like, there's no way that he can get out of this. So I had a checkmate lined up, but I was like, if I fuck it up, he's going to win. So I was, I was sitting at the board and I was like, okay, if I drop the Kama here to defend as a blocking piece, if I drop the Kama to defend here as a blocking piece, I don't need to defend it, but that means... I know that he wants to drop something in this spot. He wants to drop something in this spot. And if he drops something here, that's the only thing I'm worried about. If he drops something there, if he could find that move. So for him to not be able to drop something there, I plugged that spot with my Kama. I was like, boom, I just put my own piece there. And I was like, now you can't put anything there because my mind's there. Piece did nothing offensively. It was basically just, I filled a hole with stuff. I was just like, that would be bad if, like, it would be like if I was walking down the stairs and there's a hole in the step and my opponent's like, I want to put a hole in that step right there so he can't, so he can't, uh, so he's going to fall down the stairs and hurt himself. And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? Just this step, I'm going to make it out of steel. I'm going to make this step out of steel. And they'd be like, why the hell would you make one step out of steel? That one is basically what I did. Like he had this one way to try to hurt me and I was like, I'm just going to do a move that kind of hurts me, but it like completely defends against what you're trying to do. And I dropped that down. He was like, oh my God. So I saw him like completely change his mind. He's like, I, I can't do that anymore. So I moved this piece to try to set up a new attack. And when he moved the piece to set up a new attack, I was like, move number one, there it is. Boom, I put it down. And then he moved another piece to set up a new attack. And I was like, okay, there's a checkmate here. I know that he has his checkmate here. He does have a new checkmate that he's rerouted. But I got the two turns I needed. I got the two turns I needed in order to do my checkmate. And I was like, here's my checkmate. So I spent three minutes. I looked over this checkmate. I, I read this checkmate 10 times. I was like, if he does this, this. If he does this, this. If he does that, this. If he does this, and I go there. And he does this, and there. Checkmate, boom. Again, and literally 10 times. I spent three minutes doing that. So it was a little bit faster in my head, but I, I did it 10 times. So I was like, there's no way I'm wrong. There's no way I'm wrong about this. So instead of defending that attack again, I just started the checkmate process and I got it. I beat him. So game number five, I win. So I went three and five, uh, three and two, which you already knew because I got this. But this was the uh, the end result. So after everything's said and done, there were 10 people in my group, of group B, which means you're basically knee cue or below. So large, large range of people, basically a huge range of, of skill in that group. So I have 10 people, three of them went four and one. So only lost one game out of five. Um, I was the only person that went three and three and two. Everyone else went uh, two and three or four and one, but there were no zeros. There were no just clean swipe. Every, everyone beat this guy. It was a, it was a pretty close matched group regardless of what everyone was, but um yeah, I, I'm I'm happy with what my outcome of today was, but I also know very clearly what I need to work on. And that's my, how do I read the checkmate on my side? It's called uke in Japanese, uke ga tarinai. So I need to practice how to absorb attacks better. That's the next thing I really have to work on for my next tournament. But that's going to be the end of this. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of day in the life of the tournament. Sorry that this last part was so long. This is basically the 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 video, the, the uh, independent video I was gonna make was gonna be this instead of on my computer, it's on my phone. I hope you guys don't mind the quality. Hope my audio is okay. But yeah, I, uh, I thought this was fun. If you guys like this, leave comments. So I can try to do this again when I do my next tournament. And um, yeah, so 
we're going to end it here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I actually have another tournament tomorrow, but it's just at my school. It's just a peace trap tournament. It's nothing special like this. It's not an open tournament. It's just for people at my school. So I'm not going to do anything like that. I'll, I'll give an update video this week. I'll talk slightly about this tournament and update video that I'm going to put up tomorrow, but uh, I'll put this one up separately. So hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you like it, I'll try to make another one next time I have an actual open tournament. So thank you ever for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.